Oh, Father, thank you for your grace here this morning. Hallelujah. So we started something for service, which we just want to continue. And uh, we'll be talking about seasons, right? And we're talking about time, understanding the seasons. And so we want to move a step further. So we took a step for service. And what we are looking at today is the fact that even though I, said, I started by saying what Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, that um, why the artery may see time and average, day and night will not see it. And if care is not faking, it can give an impression that the life of a Christian also is night and day. And I said this morning that it's not so. Hallelujah. Now, I want to show you in the Bible that a, 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 a believer can have a challenge, but that doesn't mean it will work in night season. Praise the Lord. And why we are saying this is because of two scriptures. We have an assurance in God's word, a guarantee that says that our light will never go down. So we read that in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 20. The Bible says that thy sun shall no longer go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord is your everlasting light. So it is possible for a person to have eternal success. It is possible for a person to reach a dimension where your light never goes down again. It rises and it stays there. Somebody say amen. amen. Not too many people in this category and want to look at how we step into this kind of thing. So we looked at one of the steps to take in first service. And then, of course, we also read Proverbs 4, a thing. The Bible says, the part of the jaws is as light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. So the life of a Christian is not such that uh, at times, you know, uh, you, you have records of success and then records of failure. And then things will happen and then things will not happen. And I explained for service that when your success begins to oscillate like that, there is a reason for it. And there is an answer in the word of God. Because by God's design, a Christian should not have a better yesterday. Hallelujah. Amen. So when people refer to good old days, something must have happened. The good old days shouldn't be good old days. should be good all along. The days should continue. Because the Bible said, this, your son shall no longer go down. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. In the same Isaiah 60, the Bible talks about, thou shalt be an eternal excellence. The joy of many generations. That's a transgenerational blessing. They talk about <laughs> transgenerational causes. But there is a transgenerational blessing. The Bible says, a good man layeth inheritance for his children's children. He who will lay inheritance, that means he has abundance of it. To be able to lay it for his children's children. Are you following me? Yes, Listen to me. I want you to remove Africa from your mentality. I understand we will support our parents, but listen to me. God doesn't plan it to be so with you that at a particular time you are dependent on your children. No, you are so big that you are living an inheritance for them. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Are you not a good man? A good man lives not even for your children, for your children's children. That's God's plan. Isaac was able to support Abraham only after the death of Abraham because Abraham never stopped growing. When he died, Isaac went further. When he died, Jacob went further. All of them, when they were about to die, they gave gifts to their children. Yes, they were mega blessed. Is <laughs> somebody hearing me? Yes, Praise sir. the Lord. Because they stepped into this principle that they were not going to have a better yesterday, their son never went down. Some I pray to God that all of us will get to this level. So Amen. when people meet you every year, you keep moving. Now, I, I said this, and I'm going to show you from Isaac. It doesn't mean challenges will not come. But you are so big. Now, Genesis chapter 26. Genesis 26. Let's start from around verse 10 or so. Genesis 26. Are you there? And then we'll read <laughs> some of the scriptures we read first. And we are going to use Daniel and David also as an example. Oh, Genesis 26. Okay. No, let's start from where Isaac sowed in the land and reap. What verse is that? 11 or give me 11. 12. Then Isaac sowed in the land and received the same year hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Verse 13. 
and the man Isaac was great. This is what I'm talking about. Are you with me here? He was great. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shout, that's my life. Next verse. For he had possession, and, and the Philistines envied him. Verse 15. For all the wells which his father's servant had digged in the days of Abraham, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with art. Next verse. Now, this is where I'm going. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art. The president of a nation saying to one man, Leave this country, you are too big for us here. Can you imagine? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, great people are rising from here. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The president came to meet one man. He said, oh, you have to leave this country. You are too big. This nation can contain you again. Now, I, I, I read that for a reason. I'm going to get there. Next verse. Next verse. Go on. Verse 17. Thank you. May their man come alive in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Verse 17. <laughs> Amen. Now, and Isaac departed and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerard and dwelt there. Next verse. And Isaac dig again the wells of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them, and he called the names after the names that Abraham called them. This is very important. Next verse. And Isaac's servant dig the valley and found a well springing water. Ne next verse. And the earth. <laughs> This word is becoming popular in Nigeria. And the earth men of Gera strive with Isaac's earth men, saying, The water is ours. And they called the name of the place Essek, because they strove with him. He left it for them. Next verse. And they dig another well, and they strove for that one again. And he called the name Sitna. Next one. And they removed from there, and dig another well, and that one they strove. And he called the name Rehobo, for he said, for now the Lord has made room for us. We shall be fruitful. Next verse. <laughs> and he went off from here to Beersheba. Next verse. And the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm the God of thy father. I will bless thee and multiply thy seed. Okay, next verse. <laughs> and then he built an altar to the Lord. And pitch his stand there. And Isaac dig wells. Isaac and well. <laughs> next verse. <laughs> and the same guy that sent him away. And Abimelech went to meet him in Gera, and Ahuzat, one of his friends, and Fikol, his captain, uh, 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 chief of army. Next verse. And Isaac said to them, Wherefore are you come to see me? Seeing that you hate me and you have sent me away from you. Next verse. And they said, We saw. <laughs> Certainly that the Lord is with thee. Now let there be a covenant. We told you to go, but now what we are saying is that you are too mighty to be ignored. Let's just have a pal. Let's strike a deal together. Because he was beginning to get, they told him to go in left. He started getting so big where he was that the nation became threatened again. Oh, but if we don't go bed this guy and have a, an arrangement with him, he can get big enough and overrun the entire nation. So they said, you know what? Okay, they came. So they said, why are you guys here? Why are you here? And they said, we have come to beg. Now, I am saying, hey, Likosi Henry, are you hearing me? What I'm about to share today, I read this place just to say that when the sun is risen upon a Christian, and your sun shall, when you get to that dimension where thy sun shall no longer get down, it is impossible for you to say, I am broke because I lost a job. Telling you to leave a job, getting some money from you can never affect your prosperity at this dimension. Amen. Are you following me? Yes, Praise the Lord. Is a dog well, they took it from him. But it didn't affect his prosperity. Yes, it, another one, they took it from him. It didn't affect, because his source was not in anything physical. The sun was upon him. And the sun will never go down. Amen. Are you following me? Yes, this was what Isaac walked in. So later they told him to leave the nation. He also showed them that it was not about location. He left the country they told him to leave. Even outside the country, they must have thought that he was prospering because he was with them in Philistine. When he left Philistine for them and he multiplied more, they saw that it was not about Philistine. There is something. They said, certainly we can see that the Lord is with you. Now, this is supposed to be a testimony of every Christian. I told them for service. 
Everyone, at one time or the other, you've had the rain pouring on you. If it has stopped, there is a reason. And I show them reason one for service, and I want to go to two others this service. Are you following me? How to walk in that scripture that thy sun shall no longer go down. For everybody, the sun will rise on you at one time or the other. Some I pray, 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 and what people call breakthrough happens. But for majority, it doesn't last. It is because certain important factors are overlooked. Because we have seen from the word of God that God's plan is that you may have life and have it out. So it is not God's plan that you have life and then it ceases and then you have it. And that's what you see about many people. Oh, it grieves my heart when I see Christians who have walked in blessing before, but then there is a problem. And we have to look at it. Why? Because I read Isaac to show you that the, it cannot, the excuse cannot be that uh, God can start you up you, on a prosperity journey by giving you a better job, but it is not that better job that is the prosperity. Yes, Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, Praise the Lord. So if the job is taken away and you are affected, then that means you are not working. It's not that true, son. That's what Pastor Jesus is the true light that lights all men. There are other lights, but there is a true light. If it is this one we are talking about, from what we saw in Isaac. So, in first service, I spoke to them about Daniel. Daniel, oh, thank you, Lord. Daniel was relevant and appointed as a leader in four dispensation. Three kings, four, uh, four kings, three different nations. In, when he rose, when he was 18, Nebuchadnezzar was the king. He handed over to his son, Belshazzar. Belshazzar did not recognize Daniel for until a finger wrote. He took off for Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar gave Daniel gifts. Belshazzar bowed for Daniel and gave him gifts. Then Dairos became king. Dairos gave Daniel gifts. Then Cyrus became king. Then Cyrus honored Daniel. And I read to the first service, Daniel chapter 6, the Bible said, this Daniel, when it was Nebuchadnezzar, he sought for wise men, it was Daniel. When it was Belshazzar, he saw for a man to write on the wall, to read the writing, it was Daniel. When Darius came, Darius said that 120 president, because 120 nations were under Darius. And he wanted to put one guy in charge, of each, in charge of each nation, and he took 120 guys from his own country. But he took Daniel a stranger, and out of 120 he chose, he looked at them again and said that the 120 cannot be meeting with them. Now. So let there be three representatives out of the 120. It was Daniel. And it's out of duty of you. Let there be one. It was Daniel. When you read about men like that, in their story, the reason can be found. So Nebuchadnezzar was from Babylon. Belshazzar, his son, was from Babylon. Darius was from Mede. Cyrus was from Persia. Three different kingdoms, four different kings, and this Daniel was relevant in all these dispensations. According to what I read from Bible scholars, it was about 18 when he got to God to Babylon. When they were trained to the end of life, it was about 88. 60 years of everlasting success. And I said, David also was a king that never lost any, any battle. There was no country, no nation that David faced that he lost the battle. Where do we have ups and downs? I'm going to explain. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. So it doesn't matter who is the president of the country. Daniel just demonstrated that. There is something in you that the world cannot ignore. Somebody shout a living amen. amen. Let's stop here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible here wants to be relevant. <laughs> Why are you that kind of? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you, are, you, are you with me? Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, when you stumble, it takes an ungodly not to know. So first service I shared with them about any time to you are in a season of harvest, to keep it going. I said the number one thing they need to be conscious of is that the product of that harvest, of that prosperity, you must share it with people that are less privileged than yourself. And we looked at the Bible first, and, and I told them for service, have you noticed? Now, some people might say that's not exactly so. I don't know, but we get to help, we find out. But have you noticed? That Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were mentioned in chapter 1 
In chapter 3, this is what I should buy from chapter 4 of Daniel to the last chapter, chapter 12, these three other guys were never mentioned again. In chapter 2, the first point to be promoted out of all of was Daniel. Daniel interpreted dreams, and the king gave him gifts. He said, excuse me, sir, promote Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel chapter 2, the last one, the Bible said that Daniel sat at the gates. And I want to explain it that again. Now, now, Daniel said, promote my friends. He sat at the gates. Now, in chapter 3, it was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were the superstars who came out of fire on hearts, and they didn't make any requests for anybody. Consequently, after that, you don't read, you don't read about them again. There is something that makes men relevant. The number one thing, and I, I, you, I don't want to go into all I said for service, do not let the first fruit of success change you. At the beginning of breakthrough, it's not even for consumption. Hey, it gives seed to the sower. Don't eat your, and I was, don't eat your seed and then don't give your seed out wrongly. But you know what? The first law, which I, or the first factor, which I mentioned for, for service, in your prosperity, you must help those who are less privileged than yourself. It's not about trying to rush to the top. It's about every advancement advance some other people also, and then the season multiplies upon you. But I said enough on that on first, uh, first service so you can uh, get the message. The message are free so you can get the message. I want to move to something else right now. Are you following me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That first step alone will set free many people. And I told you that what God wants to kill in us is greed. Greed, an abundance shows up. It's about every project you want to execute. You just discover that after a while, the rain is stopping, 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 and it's happening to a lot of people. But this season can be kept, can be sustained. The number, number two thing, go back to that, that is what I want to explain. And this is powerful. This is very important. I said it to them towards the end. Daniel requested the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, over the affairs of promise of Babylon. But, opposite, but, Daniel sat in the king's gate. <laughs> he was a watchman. And the moment he was honored, the second factor that I want to bring out from this, please pay attention. Do not let anything affect your spiritual exercise routine. Please write it down. Hallelujah. Ah. Amen. <laughs> that one has two legs, and I will talk about what they call author, but I just want to explain it in another way. Don't let it affect. Once it does, there is a serious problem. Hallelujah. I have found out. Somehow, when people begin to prosper, the other side of prosperity is that it begins to attempt to take away from you the very thing that bothered it. And whatever gives back to a thing must sustain it. Somebody is given to prayer and fasting. And now he's so blessed, there's so much food now and he cannot fast again. Somebody is trusting God for prosperity, speaking and confessing the word there and night. Now he's so blessed he cannot look at the word again. He has all the TV stations in the world. And that is what he's watching. It begins, if care is not taken, when success comes, it begins to compete with its own roots. What should give back to multiples of it? And if care is not taken, if you allow it. If you allow it. Some people are lifted at their job. And now that the business is booming, they are busy attending to customers. They will not open a page of the scripture again. And it was the same word they were speaking before. All of a sudden, the doors are open now. And now there are so many customers. And they come in. And then the guy does have, he wants to study. A customer is calling. He wants to pray. They are calling for a meeting. And then gradually, there is no route again. It begins to wither. Are you following me? Praise the Lord. Somehow Daniel understood this. After all the gifts, he was probably given a throne in the palace. He said to the king, that, no, let me sit at the gate here. At the gates, that's where you receive revelation. That I cannot leave the place of revelation for any other thing. That's why when he was made the top administrator, he was still fasting for 21 days. He understood something that when the first vision he interpreted, he fasted for three days, so able to get the vision. So he said to himself that, then I must wait at the gate of prayer regularly. Otherwise, I will lose this thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Say to your neighbor, your spiritual exercise. Oh, you know, gradually these things, they go. It's like when you switch off a fan. The blade is still rolling, but it, it's, it's off. It's disconnected, but the blade is still rolling. Or when you put a car on motion and you are on speed 120, but if you, if, if, you, if you switch off and it's on neutral, it continues to move. It will take time to notice that there's no power again being pumped into, and this is what it's happening to a lot of people. As soon as, even in the mercy of God, he holds back a bit of that season because he had the that you cannot handle it. It's beginning to affect you, weigh on you, and change you, and then your connection, connectivity is having a problem. Are you following me? Praise the Lord. Amen. Anything, anything, anything that enters your life and that you can't spend enough time in the world and pray again, it's not good for you. And when you rise, these attempts will come. Oh, the church of Christ all over the world is full, full and I've heard this many times, ministers who could read chapters and pray upon prayer until the crowd showed up in their church. Now he's preaching and gave me here and there and there's no time again. After what they begin, this is why people wither. I just showed you from the word of God that it is not God's plan that the source should be a short time and then there is no. It is eternal excellence. That's what the Bible says. The joy of many generations. But when it's like this, these are the factors that we have to look at. I want to show you one that is deeper. Are you with me? Did you get that now? Did you get that now? The Lord told me one time. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. I use Isaac as an example to show you. No matter what the devil throws at you, no matter what, if you don't change your routine, the thing will fall down like a pack of cards. No matter what, Satan has not gotten you by letting things happen in your life. He has gotten you when you allow what is happening to affect your spiritual, your routine. Oh, how many times do we tell brethren this? As soon as every time they move, I see, he just kept digging the well. He never stopped doing the same thing he was doing that made him to prosper. And check, he continued to raise altar. He never stopped. He never stopped. Otherwise, you are fired today and you are coming back home with the letter. Then, the following morning, no prayer. You have accepted the reality of that experience. You have allowed it. Normally, you will lift up your hands in the morning to worship, but something has stopped it now. The routine has stopped. Now the devil has just got to you. Whatever is the issue was never an issue until you allowed it to affect your routine. When they brought Peter to Jesus Christ, his name was Simon, an unstable person, which means a reed shaking by the wind. Jesus said that you are safe as the rock. A Christian must be rock. Solomon saw it and he said, in the morning sow your seed. In the evening do not withdraw. You don't know which one. This is, honestly, I wish you can receive. I remember many years when I was growing up, one of the leading men of full gospel, they called him his entire studio and the company God born from head to toe. I mean from top to bottom. When he was at home and they brought the news to him, he just sat on his bed and he said, I began to sing, I sing because I am big. I say, because I'm free, his eyes on that spot. By the time he stands, that's maybe the hundred time, tears of joy, and he began to pray in tongues. Somebody called the secretary, to this on landline then. I heard what happened. Tell him I'm giving 50% of the money. Somebody called, before 4 p.m., he had more money to build a finer and a newer one. Your son can no longer go down. Are you, are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? He would have missed God's opportunity if he began to respond like other people. Oh, oh, oh God, oh God. There's prayer meeting. No, no, no. I want to go and see. I see where you get there. You will build it by yourself. Are you, are you with me? Oh, how many Christians? I know people are, people are watching me. People have been cheated by. Satan is allowed to plan tricks. But if you give him attention, then he begins to give you direction. And how many, how often? Hallelujah. Did you hear of Isaac ever complaining? Just said, no problem. He understood. And this leads me to the third point. 
which is very powerful. If you check that entire passage, it was God that spoke to Isaac. Whatever, hey, Lagos, are you hearing me? You were in need. God spoke to you to do a special time of prayer, to give a special seed, whatever. That thing must not live your life. From time to time, permit me to use the word, any altar you raise to cause rain to fall, you must continue to raise that kind of altar from time to time. This is the, Bible said deceitfulness of riches. That is where riches can deceive a person. It gets to a point that what you were doing by faith, you begin to do by finance. Once you are at that point, you are in trouble. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? It's the beginning of some people having money and not praying again. You begin to do. There are, you are, there was a time of your, your, your cash flow was around 200. And from time that you could give all. Now there is 10 million. It's so difficult. And I told them something I've noticed. In the school of the spirit, you don't stay at a level. If you are not moving, you start coming down. The spirit of God could speak to you about giving when it was small. But now that it's huge, when he speaks to you, God, you two should understand that this is a big amount. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you notice after that, oh, you know the one, this is, this is very strange, the one that the Lord showed me, and this is sometimes in the season of harvest, never eat your seed, and you cannot even give your seed to the poor. Sometimes when people begin to rise, and this is what people make noise outside, don't understand, people begin to rise. Apostle Samuel was getting to this when he said that your first assignment is to secure yourself first. When people begin to rise, so there are many people now who are asking you for money and for things. They want you to help them. If care is not taken, what is for the altar between you and God? You start transferring to charity. Error. You know the meaning. You have what to give to charity because the Lord has raised you based on the altar between you and him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, when that altar comes down, after a while you do have what to give to the poor again. Are you getting what I'm saying? Somebody... How can I? Sorry, the only way I, I, I like using money as a solution because it will help us get it better. Somebody is earning 100 and you enter into a kind of partnership with God because I told them for service, kingdom advancements and less privileged people are two givings that you cannot afford not to do. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? There are two legs. Some talk about less privileged alone. No, you must, your, your money should go into gospel as well. That causes an anointing. Less privilege eliminates causes and all, takes them away from you. It's important. They are both commanded in the Bible and they, are both, they both should be done. Now listen to me. There is one that causes the anointing you to abandon. I mean the principle of prosperity, the grace for prosperity. When Paul talked about this grace, he talked about giving and receiving. So he called it grace. So there's a grace for it. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. So um, somebody's at the level of 100 and you know, all of a sudden, so he started saying that, Lord, I'm going to give you so social amount, and it begins. And then the Lord takes him to the level of two million. All of a sudden, uncle needs money. This one needs money. This one needs money. The greatest mistake the person can do is out of the money meant for anything kingdom or altar. This, this was a private conversation between you and God. I will support this kind of thing. And in case you don't know yet, go pray. God should show you a pact that you should have with him as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. Are you with me? Yes, Even as a church, as a whole church, we are pacts. There are people we give to, and one of them is Scripture Union, who is in charge of secondary school, as a pact. The Lord showed me one time like that. So, you know what? No matter the need of this church, no matter the need, first of all, we take something, we will still give Scripture Union, no matter the need. Let a heavenly face this church. Scripture Union is not a church. It's, it's an organization devoted to raising children, secondary school children. And they raise some of us as Christians in our secondary school. I will give back to them. No matter what. Are you, are you following me? Yes, if you let the need steer you at the face so much and you put your hand into what is your seed and you eat it or give it out, get ready for farming. 
Is somebody with me? Check every Christian who have risen, and you are going to find that along the line, this factor was violated one way or the other. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Honestly speaking, when you are raised by God, it's not very easy. All of us have made mistakes one way or the other. When you are raised by God, you have to be very, very careful. Because it takes a lot for this thing to continue. It takes discipline to understand what the Lord is saying. This guy, so he started getting like two million, and people started asking him for needs. At one time, he knew was he had two million, and he was supposed to give out one million. That was what has been his kind of story going on between him and God. And Lord, he got to a point where he said, Lord, I'll give you 50% of everything. And he kept rising. From 50% to 100, which was 50, so at, at the point he asked, so, but the needs were increasing. People project everybody bombarding him. And one time there was a serious need. Maybe his friend or a relative or something like that. And he felt, so that particular month, the, what he was supposed to give, he took it and he gave it to the poor. And he felt he was doing the right thing. And that's the mistake Lord Brown made. Then he noticed that from that moment, it was becoming more and more difficult. So from two, he started having 1.5, 1.2, and he had less and less and less to help the poor. Until the Lord told him. It, I mean, one day just sat down and realized that, come. Even the poor I was talking about, now I'm not in a position to help them again. Because only those who are rising can help others to rise. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. You begin to understand, Jesus wasn't being callous. That was why he said to them, the poor you always have around you, but you do always have me. He was telling the, the apostle, the, one of the, uh, Judas, okay, we can't call him apostle. He could have been one, but he died before his time. Judas said, this oil could have been sold to the poor. And Jesus told Judas, I don't think like that. He said, there is a time. Even me, Jesus, I give to the poor every now and then. But that which this woman is doing now is necessary for now. That Jesus was telling Judas that don't mistake it, don't mix it up. What is for the master is not for the poor. What is for the poor is not for the master. They are two different things. Are you getting? There is an attempt out there. To talk Christian into nothing for the Lord, everything for the poor. I feel sorry. The scripture cannot be violated. Study the Bible for yourself. The Bible is our manual as Christians. Let him that is taught the word communicate with the teacher. The Bible talks about people giving to the apostles' feet and all those things. It is what the Bible says. What I usually tell people is that if you don't trust a church, then leave and go to the one you trust. It doesn't cost, it doesn't cost no. Are there people who misbehave? Emphatically, yes. There are people that we are ashamed of. That they have, I mean, but the sincere truth is that you have the word of God by yourself to check and to read. Otherwise, you can't get a result promised in the Bible if you are not following the steps of the Bible. Are you following me? You know what I've just shared with you now is why many taste it and then it disappears. No matter how many times people come around you, I... I I took my time to show you, I said, it doesn't matter. You have a business, even if they shut down that business, government says something, it affects nothing. Because if your son is set and there is something between you and God, you are not eating your seed, you are not doing it, you will discover that supernaturally, a better place will open up. When they arrested Paul and they put him in jail to stop preaching, he wrote letters, all of us are still reading, right, reading letters today. You know what he said? He said, the thing that has happened to me has led to the furtherance of the gospel. They arrested him to stop preaching. The arrest led to more preaching. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? When the apostle cannot be stopped, Laban tried it with Jacob, and he found that Jacob could not be cheated. The guy kept multiplying. And he kept multiplying. And if you, when he had the rest, when he wrestled with God, the Bible says that when God blessed him, as he was limping, the Bible said the sun rose upon him. And that sun never went down. When he saw Pharaoh, he blessed Pharaoh. Even Pharaoh accepted prayer from Jacob. What a man. And these are patriarchs who did not live under the law. The law started after them. So Abraham was the father of faith. They operated purely by faith. And I'm telling you, men and brethren, there are patterns that a believer should follow. That's the truth. I would say, look unto Abraham, your father. There are patterns. There are patterns that believers should follow. We should learn something from their story to understand that this is God's plan for a Christian. You know what? The amount of poverty that is in Nigeria now is unimaginable. But it grips one. When those who call upon the name of the Lord are also part of it. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Have you heard me today? Praise the Lord. Pay attention to these two things. So I started with the first service. When you succeed, David remembered other men, even those who did not go to war with them. He gave them things. And I, I established that first service. Daniel remembered his friend. As now he was promoted, the first thing he talked about people. He did not think of sitting on that uh, key and then so that Shadrach, Bishop, and Bishop without start respecting him. And that's what people do with success. You want to outshine your friends and every other person. It's not so. And you know, I won the first service. There is a way you can become successful and you start talking anyhow about others. I don't know how some people are using their life. You, 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 your communication looks like I know what I'm doing, they don't know what they are doing. Remember time and chance. You only bless, you are not smarter than other people. But some that this thing can lead there that you begin to analyze all of them. See that one? I don't know. That's why he said that's why it's pro. <laughs> and it affects how you talk. And it shouldn't be. Actually, the beginning of your breakthrough in life is a test. That test qualifies you for something higher or back to square one. Hallelujah. Have you heard me today? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Remember that. Your spiritual exercise. Keep the routine. No matter what. Keep the routine. No matter what. I've been gripped by sickness before. Not even too long ago. But I kept coming, prayer meeting, everything. It left by itself. Do not let, don't let the devil bend you. Oh, how many Christians are weak? Any small thing, you know, they just change. So he's not praying again. What happened? Uh, is this one? Uh, no, no matter what, things that you do, continue to do. If you have a way of speaking the word of faith all around you, when you are lifted, never stop speaking those words. You know what shocked me? Now, I, I, maybe this one example I can give. I'm, I'm surprised that the last interview with Aliko Dangote, he said I still fasting once in every week. The richest man. Somebody not of the covenant. Fasting every week. He said every week. That doesn't mean every week. And there are Christians. They are so busy. So busy. I was in the owner of Health Plus. I was in a conference where she came to speak. I said that she had the chance to speak with Aligo Dangote, and he told her it's shared every day. He wakes up the same time every day. Vacation or no vacation, he prays the same time. He said, I mean, Musa, I pray so, so time. I do this. Some Christians, what is he busy about? 700,000. And 15 era. That's what he's busy about. And that, that is what is busy that it is. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very busy. So when I woke up, I had to rush. Who is the client who has seen? He's bringing one fifty thousand, And you cannot pray. If you ask me to answer this question, now, what is the greatest problem of 21st century Christian? Consistency. We fluctuate like weather. Consistency. Sometimes you ask people that, can you begin a prayer journey and stick to it? Can you say I pray 5.30 every morning and forever? Say that even when, my grand, when you become grandparents, grandchildren come to your house, they know that grandma prays 5.30. Some of our ancient grandma, they had this principle. They were not diseducated, but they had their time of devotion. And nobody could take it away from them. But it's not so present. I mean, you just, anything you pray when you know, no matter what. And why men slept? What happened? Don't sleep. So this is what I've shared with you today. Remember others. Your spiritual exercise. And then, understand the place of every seed. The author, when the author is down, there will be a problem. Once it's down, once it is down, are you with me? Praise the Lord. Are you following me? The Lord has told me many times, never get to a point where you cannot give out any amount again. It won't say you should give out everything every now and then. 
but to make sure that we are not, <laughs> you know, funny enough, when we were in school, I was told that the boys in a particular cult group, they used to do this. One, some of their leaders, it's, it's funny, it's crazy, but then one of them told me, well, you got converted later. He said they would just look at you and be like, you are becoming weak as our leader. Other leaders, so, they would just assume that, how strong is this guy? He's our leader, we must not allow him to be weak. They can just pick you up one day and beat you with claw stick and everything. And you must not retaliate. So he said they are saying that in case there is fracas between you and other courts, <laughs> so if there's no fight for one year, they will organize a severe beating for you and you come out, stand strong to prove that I am still intact. That's the point. So I want to be sure that the guy that is leading them has not become so relaxed that if there is a fight, he will be the first to run away. So if there's no fight for six months, within those six months, they will organize a beating for you. And you cannot retaliate. So they come to your room, they tie you up, they hit you heavily and every, and then when they are through, they bow to you. That guy, you are still, you still there. <laughs> so that way you have authority to command them. I mean, they are not afraid. That if there's a fight now, they know that you are not afraid of sword and everything. <laughs> but if they give you one time, say, yeah. <laughs> they know that they are in trouble. Are you understand? You know, it's, 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 the Lord trains us that we are not attached to anything. So from time to time, it gives a command for us to give because really, if you don't empty yourself, there's no space for new things to come in. Have you heard me today? Yes, Pay attention to these things. If you get them right, I guarantee with the word of God, you will never know night again in your life. Amen. And I'm saying that regardless of what men do to you, you will never know night. Your case will be like this guy that was the best presenter in Ojit. I don't know, you know, in Augusta, where I grew up. Uh, many of you remember it was a part, and I talk about one uh, mystery, mystery things about life and scaring people day and night. It's a Yoruba program. No, 8 to 10 every Friday. The amount of adverts this guy was sitting over. He was so rich. In a building where I grew up, just 8 o'clock, you see people with a transfer radio, <laughs> no light. They'll be listening to the guy about witches and everything, and they will be able to sleep. <laughs> and next Friday, they will go there again. Every, everywhere, everywhere. So what I decided to listen, I decided to listen to myself, like, wow. And my friend told me that when he saw this guy, my friend was working in the radio studio, when he saw the guy in the studio, fine-looking guy. You know, he would dress like old man. So we're like, ah, is this a guy saying all those things? That the one village, one girl was standing in the air, and they, he would say things, and you'll be afraid. I said, yeah, a Christian. I saw all people listening. Every, and it became the most popular program in the city. He was fired at the radio station where he was working. And in a short while, he had more money, more influence, more everything than when he was in that radio station. If a child of God is told to stop, it is because there is something bigger. If you are operating by this, if not, when they stop you to look like when they stop other people, then you start complaining, I do how much God they told me to and all those, and it shouldn't be. That's why I'm sharing this with us. Have you heard me today? Yes, sir. Is someone blessed? Yes, sir. Pay attention to these three things. Always. Pay attention. Daniel chapter 6, the Bible says that Daniel prayed three times as his custom was. The spiritual exercise. As his custom. When they signed that thing, even those guys knew the time of his prayer. When they signed that nobody should pray, they went to his house at the right time and they were not disappointed. One of them said that if we, if we set him up and we go by 12, you'll meet him praying. Daniel knew he was being set up. You know that Daniel could have told King when the king wanted to sign that excuse, I don't sign no. I am the target. And because the king loved Daniel more than another person, he wouldn't have signed it. But so much was his assurance in what I've just read to you that my son can't go down. He didn't tell king anything. He allowed them to sign. The king signed this anything. After it was the closest to the king. He was like, okay, they are bringing this form to you tomorrow. Don't sign. He said, no problem. He allowed them to sign. And when he got home, he opened his window as usual. Daniel was praying like that when he was 18. As at the time of this incident I mentioned, he was 88. He was still praying that three times a day. Honestly speaking, it me when I see believers who are very, very light. Any small thing. There's prayer meeting tomorrow. It was raining. <laughs> when I woke up, it was raining. So, so. But there are weddings. 
that even if it's raining fire, you will go for the wedding. You know, I tell myself that what are the important things to us in life? I don't know whether she might not like me too much. She will forget my party. I've told you for one of our one of our members because of wedding was going to miss writing the exam in one of these telecoms. This was someone that we all believed in God that she would get a job in the early days of this church. And she got the job. They called her for an interview. They said she come from medical school. So she was telling the examiner, the woman there, that uh, they said, Saturday, they said, can, can we make it next week? I wanted to go for wedding. So that one reported that to somebody who called me. And I told her. I called her. The first one I said, I said are you all right? You are waiting for the job. You are going for a wedding in Bado. You want to produce, pro, pro, promote, postpone your medicals. Say the wedding you are going for in Bado. Are you the one joined there? She said, no. I the chief bridesmaid? No. Are you one of the groups? Are you one of the ladies? Brother, nothing. You are nothing. Just to wear gilly and show up. And you want to postpone your... You know, it, it's a, you know the way party does some people? When they hear party. So people can celebrate more than they celebrate himself. By Friday night, the gilly is on the bed. They have arranged everything. But by Sunday morning, there's no clothes to wear to church. <laughs> and you know, they think all those things are okay. And now, when you are now getting angry and praying to God, the angels who are watching you that, so you think we don't know you. When it comes to anything kingdom, you will draw back. But any other thing, you are alive. If the party is nigh, by 7.45, you are there. Seated. So that food will reach you on time. You take a table. When you have enough people serving, you offer. You serve. You serve with them. But you see an usher arranging chair, you are looking at the usher. When they finish arranging. Even when they ask you not to sit, that's where you will sit. It's amazing how we get our priorities wrong. So people say, why are you not in church? See, we had party on Saturday, so we're watching plates on Sunday. <laughs> I imagine at times some angels are like, Shaker, should we give this person a knock on our head on this head? How can you say, you know, say you're and it's sweet in your mouth, you know. Why don't you keep quiet? So why are you not in church? Mm. <laughs> you, are, you are saying it. Now you see, we just had, <laughs> amen. These are the, it's, men and brethren, I will pray this forever. Jesus is calling on the church to be consistent. I think the leaders today, revival has never happened anywhere except a group of Christians praying and praying for a long time. It's not something that you just, you know, some people start something and then they, are, they just don't come. No, today, no, you have to make up your mind to be very diligent. It's one of the attributes of a spiritual man. To be very diligent in all that you do. Don't let anything change you. Long time ago, some of us have left time behind. It's an insult for me to give one thing. Why well, you know there are people that January they give, February they don't, March they give, April they don't, June they do, and they don't. And one, once, once or like that, they probably are going to have Bible said in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, do not we told you, for you don't know which one will prosper you. You don't know which one. Once you start oscillating like that, like pendulum, you go, you come, you go, you come. January, you are very happy. So you are a giver. February, you are not very happy. Or there are many things to do. I told the leaders today, up to the point, I said, dear leaders, let me tell you the truth. Sit down and calculate how many hours you have in a day, in a week. All of us have 24 times 7. Out of 24 times 7, take your Bible and paper. Write out what belongs to God first. I go to church on Sunday. I go to church on Wednesday. I join prayer meeting and so-so time. Every other activity of my life will share the rest of the time. That is what it means that put first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added. Begin to say to yourself that I don't pray my own prayer. Lord, help me. We carry 5%. All the remaining 95% will be kingdom advancement prayer. Lord, I live in my Ikorodu. Save souls here. Lord, touch lives. You hear of, you are praying. Lord, let people come to the knowledge of truth. You enter hospital, you are praying for women who are in labor there. Lord, help them to deliver savers. You are, your prayer is filled with intercession. Lord, Lord, when you do that, your own will be taken care of. I round up with this. You know, because we are... So this is a great announcement. A great one. Between now and next week, you want to eat very well. Because we've determined or we've decided the annual fasting of this church will be August. Somebody shout amen. Somebody say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in August, 
the whole church is fasting. Hallelujah. You see, I have to close now. Something, something interesting happened, and I told them. At the prayer meeting yesterday, I told the people. So all through August, we are fasting, and it's from morning till 4 p.m. And I said that to make it easy on everybody, you can take tea. And I said, not that you put several cups of tea. And every one hour, every 30 minutes. <laughs> Just take something, especially if you do a kind of work that is very strenuous, so that you won't have to, uh, you can take tea, you can take a drink. Um, I said that the depth of the hunger in your stomach is not directly proportional to the answer of your the, the prayer way. So we are not interested in punishing anybody, but the Bible talks about fasting. So we are fasting. But I'm just saying that you can take a drink. And again, don't put several bottles. Uh, they say we can take a drink. If you, are, you work something that requires, and I just take a bit of drink, four o'clock is very minimal. So we are fasting and prayer. And every morning, 12 midnight and 5 a.m. are the prayer times. So, and we are praying only kingdom prayers. Salvation of souls. I told them something in the morning. South Korea was 100% a Buddhist nation. Young Gichu and Apo started praying. Now they are 48% Christian, going to 50%. By a projection in the last start, next 30 or 40 years, the entire South Korea might be saying, now listen to me. It is easier. I don't want to mention the particular religion that we have here. It is easier to win anybody from any religion over to Christ than Buddhists. Buddhists are very religious, very committed, and they read a lot and they travel in the spirit a lot. Tiger with all of them. Are, are, it's a serious stuff. But listen to me. Intercession did it in Korea. Many years ago, I was concerned. I asked God that upon all the prayers we pray in the church, Friends in the north, people from other religions are not getting saved. Rather, they are prisoners are feeling that these people are training to attack them and everything. What is going on in Nigeria? And I told them the answer. I told them said, the answer didn't come in the late. After many days, when I read what's going on in South Korea, the Lord asked me a question. Check what kind of prayer do Nigerian church pray? South Korea was in abject poverty. They are rising now, and it's because of the church. You know that Europe experienced prosperity because of the church. It is true. Why it is not true in Nigeria is that the kind of prayer we are praying, Nigerians are selfish. So I took three largest churches. Or I don't, I don't want to mention any name. You know, I love and I honor this man. I'm not speaking against them. But it's not that they, it, it's, so, it's just the, the way the people in the country are. I watch conventions of these pro, uh, churches and I watch their uh, uh, monthly on nights and everything, and I saw every single one I was watching on TV. From morning, from night to daybreak, the entire prayer and everything is centered on my breakthrough, my this one, my that one. That kind of church, that when all of us are praying like that as a church, we cannot grow a nation economically, we cannot grow a nation in terms of righteousness and character. We will not. And when we bring that kind of Christian, no matter how much we get them to pray about their need, they will still be selfish. This is why when money is being shared, Christians collect their parts. I hope you know. Money doesn't have religion. <laughs> Amen. And I told them of somebody, I'll use someone, so I don't want to give you the direction of what I'm doing. Somebody, not too long ago, contested an election and he said that he was shocked. He's a pastor. That some of the brethren that followed him to the police station collected money and voted against him. They told him later, no, yeah, well, I don't know what shocked him most. One of the other aspirants who was who looked like to win and who eventually won, actually won that place, called him and gave him 50 million and said that you know you can't win, just step aside and tweet on your Facebook page that you are for me. And the guy, he said, Can I speak with my guys? When they moved out, all of them said, Excuse me, sir, collect. Oh. About six last year, and he said, When they enter, he told them, He said, No. He told the man, He said, No. He said, His assistant pastor, he abused him from the door to their car. And when they got to the car, he said, I swear, if you see me, you're talking, call me bastard. You've heard of pastors fighting, you've heard of people just live for position in the church, you've heard all sorts. 
if we keep emphasizing materialism, you'll breed that kind of people. Some can carry gun and shoot somebody to be the next pastor of the church. Because when the church is very large, they feel that you deal with budget or billions. Uh -uh. And it's a set man. Uh, a workman is worthy of his <laughs> So calculate. When you mention church building, and you're building a cathedral of three billion, four billion, the way it sounds to some people, their mind is wired up in business way. Ah. So he begins to do politics to be the head of building committee because a tithe will go to him and it's not Mekizedek. You understand what I'm saying? We have to... <laughs> see, if you, are a, if you are a good person, you'll be born again, you're a good person, you will find the other people think this way. But I am telling you, until something happens to the entire body of Christ, and you know what? We can start the revival. God only needs Christians who begin to wake up and say enough of chasing after shadows. We need to start praying. When we do, the entire Nigeria can be born again. There is so much prophetic utterances hanging over this nation. It can be the first nation to adopt the Bible as our constitution. We will not win by fighting. Hey, they are doing this to Christians. We will win on our knees as we pray. I tweeted something recently. People have been beginning, so people have even beginning to lose confidence in prayer. The Lord told me that Nigerian church is not praying. They are praying about their needs. They are not praying. If we go this other way, we revival will bring economic growth. Revival will bring technological de development. Revival will bring it. It has happened in Europe with the Crusaders, and so we know it will bring it. Puritans will pray. They were not praying for themselves, and we are seeing the result of their prayer now. But now we are praying. When we gather for prayer meetings, to pray about our personal need. And the devil has occupied many Nigerians like that. Some, they, only, they pray that the enemies will die. When you put dress up and they go for, we are going for vigil. What are they going to pray about? Some, who is the enemy? Somebody who didn't greet them in the office. Your boss saying that you normally come late. Your record is full of the fact that you are coming late. They are thinking of suspending you. You take his name somewhere. That is, that is, Chris Lamb, Chris, <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Why, why you had native daughter to Christianity? So it, I know you, you are, I know, you know, I don't understand. It's amazing what, what, what is, what is, what is going on? I went to Bab somewhere and they were talking about it with somebody there and somebody said that, oh, some people naturally came to pray to this guy and I, just one Bab is not too far from me and he said, okay, I'll be coming. He said, but another pastor came to Bab and he said, Let, the guy telling the pastor, said, let me be the very honest pastor. Now, woman are they look for and the pastor said, I come to actually will give you a girl. And he did. You know, it, it's. <laughs> Somebody living with a guy telling my wife to help her pray that the battle will be won by the Lord. I laugh when I hear that expression. <laughs> Which Lord is fighting what battle? You are staying with a guy. The guy's mom wants to get another girl for the guy. You are not married to the guy. You've aborted for him. But now you are still living in his house. And the mother feels like you're a liability. She wants to marry somebody. And she told my wife that three pastors are joined her to fast and pray that the Lord will win the battle. I said, sorry. <laughs> the Lord is not in any battle. The Lord doesn't even know about any battle. You are carrying your bag and go to your parents' house. If he loves you, let him come and meet with you. I don't waste my prayer on stupidity. The Lord will win. Say, join us to pray. And the Lord, you know what, 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 when my wife was talking to her, what, what she was saying, she didn't know that there was anything wrong with what she was saying. I have counseled a lady before, whose marriage was about to be, the husband was not here, and the husband accused her of infidelity. And when I started talking with her, she was telling me something she had done, I was like, wow, madam, you shouldn't have done this. And I learned that she, she's quite rich. Every month she posts money to some pastor and they pray for her. And you wonder, what is, what is going on? And some people are very far from the word of God. So the same way people were doing with native doctor, they started doing, you, you can't try that with me. I am a pastor, not a native doctor. <laughs> you don't want to follow God. You don't want to anything to do with Christ. You hate studying the Bible everything, but you want to come to a pastor who will just pray inside the bottle of water and give you. And you go and pour it on your enemy. And their head will explode. Part of my job description is not murder. Murder is not <laughs> Execution is not one of them. So, like oh, I say, the, all, the, all those who are, and people like that, when you raise the people, the way people will pray, all those enemies in my, and as they are praying, they are having pictures of people. So you mean you will be happy 
When you wake up in the morning, say, Mama Lagbaja is dead. Say, oh, glory to God. I took my head. <laughs> so who is next? <laughs> Why? Why? If God anoints some people, all of us are in trouble. Even if you drive nonsense on the road, your car, you won't get home. You abuse them on the road, they tell you that's where you are going. <laughs> Before you reach Allen. <laughs> Shall we rise? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, I don't say this to make jest of any. I don't, I don't attack any church. I love every man of God in Nigeria. I respect them so much. I might not agree with some of their doctrinal stance, but I love and I respect them so much. I believe that there's a coming, there's coming a revival. It will correct all of us. It doesn't make all of us also perfect. Maybe there are mistakes that we to make as a church, but one thing I know is that when the revival comes, everybody will be corrected, those who submit, and Jesus will be glorified. Say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's give our offering.